Does Donald Trump speak differently than Kamala Harris? Oh. You're gonna get us in trouble again. Well, what if I use the computer to calculate the reading level of each speech? And I use AI to calculate the positivity and negativity of each speech. There's no way a computer can accurately analyze political speech. I've done it before. You mean in the last video? In my last video, I analyzed the inaugural speeches of all the presidents, including Trump and Biden. However, as many of you pointed out, these are probably not the best speeches to use. Wouldn't they be the best speeches for a president? No. These speeches are written by speechwriters, so they're not the most accurate example of a candidate's own speaking style. Also, I didn't even include Kamala Harris since she has never given an inaugural speech. Many of you recommended that I look at other various types of campaign speeches to get a better sampling of each candidate's speaking style. I'm already skeptical. In this video, I downloaded several different speeches that I could find for both Trump and Harris. I used these speeches to analyze the differences between their speaking styles, and I was even able to download the transcript from the debate, which revealed even more interesting results. But enough talk, more data! It's data time! I am data. I downloaded the transcripts from several different speeches the candidates gave, including rally speeches, press conferences, and interviews. But in an interview, you'll also be analyzing the words of the interviewer. No, I found a website, rev.com, that actually transcribes these videos and splits the words up by speaker, then publishes them for everyone to download. So for this analysis, I'll only be looking at the words actually spoken by the individual candidates themselves. Sounds like you'd need a lot of data for this to work. Well, unfortunately, it was a bit difficult to find the same quantity of data for both candidates. Trump speaks frequently, and he speaks fast and long. Conversely, Harris doesn't have as many speeches, and her remarks are much more brief. This means I had to go back farther in time in order to get the same number of speeches for Harris, and I don't have as many words of hers to use. How many words do you have? I found 13 speeches for each candidate. For Trump, this totals about 120,000 words. For Harris, this totals about 20,000 words. That's a big difference. Yeah, but even 20,000 words is quite a bit of data. For my last video, I only used one speech from each president, and that was only about 2,000 words per speaker. First up, let's take a look at the Fletch Kincaid grade level. That's just a poor approximation of what grade level they're speaking at. Yeah. It's really just a simple formula that counts how many syllables are in each word and how many words are in each sentence. So longer sentences with longer words get higher scores. It's also important to note that the transcription service is adding all of the punctuations like periods, which is what defines sentence length. So who had a higher speaking level? Let's take a look. If we look at all the speeches I downloaded for Harris, we see that her lowest speech scores over the fourth grade level. Her high speech scores just under the ninth grade level, giving her an overall weighted average of about a sixth grade reading level. For Trump, we see that his lowest speech scores at over the third grade level, and his high speech scores at the sixth grade level, giving him an overall weighted average of about a fourth grade reading level. Ugh. Reading level isn't that meaningful though. Well, we can also use AI to analyze speeches. Can you get the AI to analyze for truthfulness? No, but we can use AI to analyze how positive and negative each speech is. Oh, this is that sentiment analysis stuff. I don't trust it. I think it's better than you might realize. No, the tone and context of human speech is just too subtle. Yeah, but the AI is actually pretty good. <sighs> you just don't understand. What you don't know could fill a library. Was that a negative sentence you just said? Let's ask OpenAI. I asked OpenAI the following question. Please provide the sentiment analysis of this text. Respond with negativity score from zero to 100 and positivity score from zero to 100. What you don't know could fill a library. And it responded with a negativity score of 60 and a positivity score of 20. So the AI thinks my sentence is pretty negative? That's right. Okay, but a simple score doesn't mean it actually understands the nuances of human speech. Why don't we ask it why it scored it that way? I asked it. Can you explain why? And this was its response. Certainly, the sentence, what you don't know could fill a library, carries a somewhat negative connotation because it implies that the person being addressed has a significant lack of knowledge. This can be considered a criticism or a put down, which contributes to the higher negativity score of 60. At the same time, the sentence is not extremely harsh or aggressive. It could be interpreted as slightly humorous or hyperbolic, which somewhat lessens the severity of the negativity. This is why the negativity score is not extremely high but still significant. On the other hand, there is not much about the sentence that conveys positivity. There is no praise, encouragement, or positive positive sentiment expressed. The slight positivity score of 20 accounts for the fact that the sentence is not purely negative and could be seen as a mild or joking remark, but it largely remains critical. Wait, did the AI just explain the subtleties of the English language? I think it just did. 
The one issue I did find with the AI is that splitting up speeches into smaller segments can greatly affect the scoring, depending on how small each segment is. What do you mean? Most of these speeches are too big for me to send to the AI, so I have to chop them up into smaller segments. The size of each segment does seem to change how the AI aggregates the scores. So I just try to be consistent with the size of each segment. I'm already skeptical. For this analysis, I fed each paragraph of each speech to the AI and asked it to score the sentiment of that paragraph. I then aggregated those scores to get an average sentiment for the speech and then aggregated those speeches in order to get an overall average for each candidate. Was there a big difference between Harris and Trump? Oh yeah. Kamala Harris's least negative speech scores at about 5% negativity, and her most negative speech scores at about 44% negativity, with a weighted average of about 25%. Her least positive speech scores at about 54% positivity, and her highest speech scores at about 89% positivity, with an average score of about 71%. If we plot each of her speeches back to back and compare the negativity to positivity, we can see that each speech is more positive than negative. For Trump, I found his least negative speech was about 60%, and his most negative speech was about 77%, with an average score of about 68%. For his positivity, his least positive speech was about 19%, and his most positive speech was about 40%, with an average of about 29%. If we plot each of his speeches back to back, we can see that each speech is more negative than positive. If we plot all of these speeches next to each other and sort them so that the most negative speeches are on the left and the least negatives are on the right, we can see that all of Trump's speeches are more negative and less positive, and all of Harris's speeches are more positive and less negative. In total, Harris has an average negativity score of about 25% and an average positivity score of about 71%, whereas Trump has a negativity score of about 68% and a positivity score of about 29%. So basically, Harris is always speaking with mostly positive sentiment, and Trump is always speaking with mostly negative sentiment. But can the AI really understand what's positive or negative? Sure. But won't it have its own biases? Certainly. But we can check its findings. Let's see some examples of what it thinks are positive and negative. I took Harris's most negative speech about voting rights and election integrity and asked the AI to give me the most negative excerpts from this speech. Here is what it gave me. Over the past few years, we have seen so many anti-voter laws that there is a danger of becoming accustomed to these laws. The assault on our freedom to vote will be felt by every American in every community, in every political party. And if we stand idly by, our entire nation will pay the price for generations to come. I then took Harris's most positive speech at a homegoing service for Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee and asked the AI to give me her most positive excerpts from this speech. Sheila Jackson Lee was a woman of deep faith and deep compassion. She was a proud member of our beloved Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and she was a dear, dear friend to my husband, Doug, and me. Sheila Jackson was one of the smartest and most strategic legislators in Washington, D.C. And I will say, and we all who have worked with her and had the blessing of work with her know, she was also one of the most unrelenting. Sheila Jackson Lee was a change maker. She worked with all her heart to lift up the people of her city, of her state, and of our nation. I then took Trump's most negative speech at the southern border talking about Harris. Here is what the AI thinks are his most negative excerpts. And we have a Marxist that's running, and I don't think you can let her. Well, this country is not ready for a Marxist president. She will never build the wall. She doesn't want to build the wall. She's only saying if she, if she changes her mind, it's only because she wants to get elected, because who wouldn't want to have a strong border? You need strong borders and strong elections, and we have neither. But we're going to have very strong borders, and we're going to have very strong elections. Soon. And I hope the press writes this story fairly because it's a story of disgrace. We had a border czar who was the border czar. She loved the title, but she didn't want to do the work because she's lazy. And probably more importantly than being lazy, she wants to have an open border. They have done such a bad job in this government in terms of everything, foreign relations, border, crime, jobs. And today you found out that the job numbers are fake on top of everything else. Finally, I took Trump's most positive speech at a National Guard conference and asked for his most positive excerpt. I've had no greater honor in life than to serve as your commander in chief. You are always ready and always there for us and for the president of the United States. You are always there for me, I will tell you, and I'm always going to be there for you. In my first term, I gave the VA choice and made it permanent. You know, VA choice, will you, you don't have a doctor, 
you go and you go outside. I mean, people were waiting for four months, for five months. You people probably know it. You have friends that know it very well. They go in for something that was not a big deal and that end up being terminally ill because they couldn't get to see a doctor. So I created and have VA choice. The National Guard is America's first and last line of defense. And you do not get the credit you deserve, but actually you do because down deep, everybody knows it. You get a lot of credit in your own way, a little bit different, but we really respect respect and uh, appreciate the job you do. Thank you to every guardsman for your selfless service. Well, I guess those do sound awfully positive and negative, but there's more. While I was putting all this together, something major happened between Harris and Trump. The debate, the debate. We finally got to hear the candidates speak together. From this debate, I got an additional 6,000 words for Harris and 8,000 words for Trump. Wait, I thought each candidate was supposed to get equal time in the debate. Mostly. In total, I calculated that Harris spoke for nearly 38 minutes, while Trump spoke for over 42 minutes. So, not quite equal. But remember, speaking time is not the same as number of words spoken. What do you mean? During the debate, Harris spoke at an average rate of 156 words per minute, while Trump spoke at about 190 words per minute. So Trump spoke faster. That's right. Trump is able to say more words due to his faster pace. So, did they speak any differently during the debate? Yes. First, let's take a look at how their reading levels changed. Harris spoke higher than a 12th grade reading level, while Trump spoke higher than a 6th grade reading level. This is higher than their previous averages, especially for Harris. Eh, nobody cares about their reading levels. What about their sentiment analysis? Both Trump and Harris increased their negativity during the debate. Remember, we had seen Harris's negativity at 25% and positivity at 71%. But for the debate, her negativity increased significantly to 52% and her positivity decreased to 45%. For Trump, we had seen a negativity of 68% and a positivity of 29%. But for the debate, his negativity increased to 75% and his positivity decreased a bit to 22%. So they both were more negative during the debates. That's right. Which I think makes sense since the debates are more contentious. But here are some of the most positive excerpts from the debate. I believe in the ambition, the aspirations, the dreams of the American people. My passion, one of them, is small businesses. And I pledge to you to be a president for all Americans. I intend to be that president. I believe in what we can do to strengthen our small businesses, which is why I have a plan to give startup businesses $50,000 tax deduction to pursue their ambitions, their innovation, their ideas, their hard work. My father was a Brooklyn builder, Brooklyn, Queens, and a great father, and I learned a lot from him. And I built it into many, many billions of dollars, many, many billions. I got the oil business going like nobody has ever done before. And here are the negative ones. Because they're, they're destroying the fabric of our country by what they've done. They're criminals. Many of these people coming in are criminals, and they're destroying our country. They're dangerous. They're at the highest level of criminality. She's been against it for 12 years. Defund the police. She's been against that forever. She was the border czar. She doesn't want to be called the border czar because she's embarrassed by the border. She did things that nobody would ever think of. Now she wants to do transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison. This is a radical left liberal that would do this. Wait, you didn't show any negative quotes for Harris. The AI didn't pick any negative quotes for her. But you said Harris had quite a bit of negativity. Yes, but Trump had a lot more negative things to say. This sounds like bias. It could be, but keep in mind, Trump is stacking the deck with so many negative quotes that the AI just doesn't have a chance to find any negative quotes for Harris. Listening to the quotes, it sounds like Trump focuses on criticizing the past, while Harris focuses on a more hopeful future. Well, that makes sense since Trump is challenging the existing administration. The incumbent wants to be positive about the current direction of the country, whereas the challenger wants to criticize the existing administration. Well, we can test this out. Four years ago, Trump was the incumbent when he debated Biden, who was the challenger then. Let's take a look at the sentiment from those debates. In 2020, Trump had two debates with Biden. In the first debate, Biden had a negativity score of 51% and a positivity score of 43%, whereas Trump had a negativity score of 63% and a positivity score of 31%. The second debate was very similar to the first, except Trump was a bit more positive. Comparing that debate to the debate with Harris, we see that Harris and Biden actually have pretty similar scores to each other. For Trump, we see he was less negative four years ago when he was the incumbent. However, Trump is still the most negative speaker in any debate. In every debate, he is always more negative than positive, and he is always more negative than his opponent, regardless if he is the incumbent or the challenger. So what's the takeaway? 
Well, I think it's clear to say Trump is overall more negative. Yeah, but which candidate is better? Oh, I don't think this data actually provides an objective indicator of who to vote for. If someone speaks more negatively, you might say they are being mean. Or you could say that they are just telling it like it is and exposing society's problems. Similarly, if someone is speaking more positively, it might mean they're really great, or it might just mean they're avoiding the country's tough problems. It's hard to say. I don't think this data will actually change people's minds about the candidates. People will probably just use this data to support their pre-existing beliefs. So then what was the point of all this? Well, I think it's still important to look into this information because it can reveal insights you may not have even realized were important in the first place. This is probably gonna be my last political video for a while, and the algorithm famously won't notify subscribers about new videos if they are even a little bit different than the previous ones. So, if you like this type of data analysis and are interested in seeing it applied to other speakers, not just politicians, then you should definitely subscribe and set notifications to all. That's the only way to override the algorithm and ensure you'll get notified of future videos, even if they are a little bit different than this one. Get the bell on!